Students in fifth grade science are learning to differentiate between weather and climate. Rather than simply having students write out the differences in their notebook, the teacher wanted to incorporate various elements of technology to amplify the experience, which is now as follows. Students, I can't wait for the lesson today. We're gonna to be using a new tool called Zoom. This is like Skype or FaceTime and will allow us to video conference with fifth grade students in one of four states across the country. This will be a jigsaw activity done in groups of four in which each student will be assigned one state to gather those weather and climate facts, and then each student will bring back their learning to share with their group. Upon connecting, you will collaborate with the student you are paired up with from one of the states you are assigned, which include California, Michigan, New York, and Florida, and your task will be to, to identify five details for each side. To ensure valuable use of our connection time, you will need to research these facts for our own state, Texas, prior to the Zoom video conference. Can't wait to invite your appraiser in to see this lesson, right? It's a super engaging activity, thanks to the Zoom video conference component. There's an authentic audience that exists beyond the four walls of their own classroom. Students will be virtually collaborating via Zoom and Google Slides, plus, they're given the opportunity to conduct their own research. But if you really break it down and look at the depth of thinking students are asked to do in this lesson, it is a super low level cognitive task in which students only list facts or to elevate it one step further, maybe they're adding a description to those facts. When you remove the glitz of technology and you focus it down to the actual learning task students are being asked to do, couldn't this exact same learning have happened by students using their notes, a textbook, or finding the same facts on a kid-friendly search engine? All this to say, just using technology is not enough. A lesson is not elevated solely because students are on their computers. One of the goals of this course is to heighten one's awareness that it's not the tool that promotes deep thinking. This means there isn't such a thing as a tool or website that is always high level are always low level. Rather, it's how the technology is used to support the learning task. For example, Google Slides may be discounted by some in thinking it's a tool that can only be used to accomplish low level instruction, but depending on the task, it can also be used for deeper thinking, such as providing detailed critical peer feedback in which students are asked to evaluate and appraise one another's thoughts, or if used to solve a problem that has more than one correct answer, justify their thinking through text, and peer evaluate each other's work, which requires additional elements of analyzation through these multiple sources of feedback. So, to sum it up, it's the task, not simply the technology, that has the capability to increase depth of thinking. To take student experiences further in Northwest ISD, we refer to academic models that increase cognitive demand, such as Bloom's Taxonomy or the Rigor and Relevance Framework. This course will also introduce you to technology integration models, specifically SAMR, to evaluate the technology you are currently using and how to more purposefully integrate it to support your learning task. For the sake of focusing on cognitive demand, this course will not only focus on the use of technology, but the task and depth of thinking that you are asking learners to do.